Hey everyone, before we get on into the video, I want to let you know that Cozy Jump Studio now has a Facebook page. I will have the link in the description box below. Go on over there and like our page and follow us. Hey everyone, we are going to do a video today with some really neat stuff, or at least I think so. You guys will have to let me know in the comments below. I just wanted to say thank you for all of the comments that I got on my last video. You all seem to really love the dark and moody. I did have some comments of people that did not like it, and that is okay because I wanted to know. I want to know what people like. I did have a few comments that I thought I would share with you all. Now, I'm not going to say their names, but... I wanted to go ahead and highlight their comments just because they really meant a lot to me and made me realize that people do like things that are more my style. I think sometimes I get away from my true self when I'm doing projects to, you know, really appeal to other people and that's okay. I, I want to do that, but I feel more in my element when it is uh, things that I really enjoy. So let's get started with those comments. The comments that I'm reading are about the specimen box in general. I had a lot of comments about that. So the first one is your method and process of transforming this odd box, which it was an odd box. It had a really weird lift up lid and then it had a pull out drawer. Uh, was fascinating to watch. I have an appreciation of all types of art and you did a great job. Enjoyed your video. So thank you for that comment. The next one was, that specimen box is so cool. You are so creative. I like seeing the products you use. Some of them are new to me, and some of them are new to me too. So I like to use them on video and show you all the new products when I'm testing them too. The next one is, oh my God, I love these, but that entomology collection box was unbelievably gorgeous and ingenious. I love the look of old collections and boxes that hold them. You made me rethink my habit of painting everything white. Laugh out loud. Thanks. You. Thank you for sharing. So yes, color is such an inspiration and I do love white pieces and I would like to try to be that white person, you know, like paint things white and then I just feel empty. I don't know. Something, I love white. I love looking at someone's projects that everything is white or they've painted everything in their house white. It's just beautiful. But when I do it, it just doesn't feel right. I don't know. Okay, so the next one is I'm not sure I realized how much I do like dark and moody. I also haven't ever seen a specimen box I liked, let alone loved. That's stunning, and it's insane how much detail you gave every inch of that box. I'm not a purple person either, but that box is gorgeous. Now, that was about the little purple box that I did. I think you are definitely in your element. Thank you for that. I appreciate that. The next one is, the more I see dark and moody, the more I like it. It's so refreshing to see colors and new themes on my subscriptions. That's very nice. Thank you so much for that comment. The next one is, wow, Sharon, that specimen box was a treasure. Dark and moody isn't my jam, but you've created some amazing pieces. The drippy paint technique turned out so rich and luscious that would definitely try my OCD, laugh out loud. I think I have some puppy pads, puppy training pads on hand that would be good to use under your projects would help with the drippy mess. You are so right. It is such a drippy mess and you all, I love it. So thanks for that comment and thanks for the tip. This one is really neat. I just love your videos. I do junk journals to go with my gourd items that I make. Gourds, I bet that's really cool. Witches and funny gourd people. Then a box to put them in. Love your colors. So that sounds very interesting. This comment really got me. It really got me thinking. You have outdone yourself. The vibe is my favorite. I love moody, witchy, gothic, oddity decor. So these are beautiful. I think you should do a separate channel if people don't like it. I also love steampunk. Your channel is so inspirational. Thank you. That is really so neat to hear that someone thinks I need to start another channel with just doing dark and moody and oddity stuff. That is my love. I love it. I love Victorian stuff. I love dark stuff. I love oddities to a point. So let me know in the comments below. Do you think I should start another channel just doing dark and moody and oddity stuff? I would love to hear your all's feedback about it. I really like this comment because this is kind of me. I just love what you do. Half my house is dark and moody. The other half is French country. I love both styles. My house is the same. I have cottage core, dark and moody, and some French country. So, and then a little bit of industrial. 
This one, this comment was so cute. I am new to your channel and I love all of these. But what you did with that box with a drawer was amazing. I did hit the like and subscribe button because, for one, I love your accent and your ideas. Thanks for sharing amazing talents with us. Thank you. I do get a lot of questions about my accent, and you all, I think I'm sitting here just talking all proper, you know, pronouncing my words all perfect, when really I'm just like, here, hold my beer. So, thanks for the comments about my accent. I just wanted to say again, thank you so much for all the comments. I could go on. There were so many comments. I got so much positive feedback. So, let's get on into this video, because I hope you all are going to like this one just as much. I am going to be working on a piece here. Well, you're, you'll see that I am repairing these little baskets with some wax thread and some hot glue because there was some holes in it and I kind of wanted to stay true to the piece. I didn't want to replace these baskets. So I just used this to repair them. And because I'm going to be painting them uh, similar to the color they are naturally, it's not going to be a huge uh, notice. Can see here where I repaired this basket with that wax thread. It does work out fine. I'm sure there's other ways to repair them, but now we're going to move on to the actual piece itself. This reminds me of a 90s decor piece. Hunter green was a very popular color in the day. Someone used this very well, as you can see from the basket holes, uh, and then also just the discolorations on the top of the shelf. We are going to give this piece a new life. Uh, this piece is going to be going into my new booth. I will have the new booth, uh, some photos of it here. I'm going to pop in for you. It's going to be in Hickory, North Carolina. I will have the name and the location in the description box below, so just check that out. Now, don't forget, you can get most of the products that I'm using at Aunt B's Attic. I will have the link for that in the description box below. If you click on and use that link, I do get a tiny uh, bit of money to purchase products for these videos. So go on over and check out Aunt B's Attic through that link. It does not cost you any more to use that link. Now, I'm using some alcohol here to clean off this sticky stuff and uh, just kind of give this a really good once over before we start. Um, painting this. The paint colors I end up using on this is Sandy Blonde by DIY and the chalk paint in black by Waverly. Now the Waverly you can get off of Amazon. I will have a link below and then the Sandy Blonde you can get from Aunt B's Attic. Now that we have the base paint on this, which I did not video, I just, I'm trying to keep things that you all already know how to do out of the videos to make them even more streamlined. I'm using this Le Courier stamp on the top of this. I was trying to see how much it would cover, where I needed to put it. Now, I've never used this stamp before, so I am using a uh, light grit sandpaper on it. It is recommended because it helps your stamp to hold the paint or whatever medium you put on it better. You only have to do that in the beginning. You don't have to do it once you use the stamp. I am using paint for this project. It is going to be the Folk Art Black, not Waverly, sorry, correction, with a Tim Holtz brayer just to roll over this and then place on the top of this. You can use ink for this. IOD does make a black ink, but I wanted a more raised texture with the paint, so that's why I'm using the paint. And I am a little out of frame in some parts of this, so I do apologize. But I'm just pressing this down, trying not to move my stamp, always keeping a hand on the stamp while I'm pressing it down. And I love how this turned out. While we're letting that dry, we're going to move on to the sides of the piece. We're, now, I have not sealed this yet. I generally don't until I get all of my transfers on there. But I'm using this fern from the Frond set, IOD, I think it's Frond's, and Botanicals. All right, so I'm going to be putting this butterfly on this area here. I think this is from Mio's Pages. If not, it's from one of the IOD, IOD transfer sets. I will be using some mushrooms coming up from the, uh, or the Mio's Pages. Now, looking at this uh, right now, you can see the background where the little baskets are going is not complete. I do finish that up with some black paint. The inside of this, actually, I started painting with weathered wood and I didn't like it. So I changed over to the black uh, paint that I did end up using. All right. 
So back to this. Now these are from Mio's pages, these mushrooms, uh, again from IOD. I really want this piece to have a, a botanical sort of um, boho look, maybe even a specimen type look. It would be really neat for someone who's doing their room in like a forest theme. I just love the look of it. Okay, so back to the top of this. I'm going to be using some of these uh, leaves on here and I'm going to let them look like they're kind of falling off of the top of this. And I'm going to add this butterfly and some more leaves just to give it a cool forefront with that uh, LeCourier stamp in the background. I don't know if you all remember me telling you that I'm really bad at laying things, my transfers down on things that they stick to. So as you just seen, that poor butterfly was stuck to the wrong side of the backing. And it would have looked so cool. So now I'm trying to find another butterfly to replace it. And I end up going with this one, which does look good, but it does not pop as much. And we're going to finish it off with the leaf on the other end, which I think I've already done. Just has not shown yet in the video. Once we get these pieces done, I'm going to go ahead and do some sanding. Sand off those edges of the leaves that are kind of going over the edge. And do a little bit of distressing. I like to distress over my transfers because they look a little worn and like they're embedded into the piece. It is not necessary. I then go ahead and do a clear coat of poly polycrylic on top of this so that it gives the paint a finished look. What I did was paint these baskets in Dixie Bell Acorn and now I'm just sealing them also with that polycrylic. You can see the finished project in the photos at the end of this video. Our next project is this wood shallow tray bowl. I've painted the back of it black with the same color of a black chalk paint. And now we're gonna go ahead and use that sandy blonde as well to paint the inside of this. Well, I'm finishing the edge of this in the black. And then we're gonna paint the inside of the bowl, the sandy blonde. This will be for decor purposes only. But the wood was really beat up and that's why I chose to paint it. Otherwise, I love natural wood and I wanted to leave the inside of the bowl wood, but it was just really beat up, so I thought we would go ahead and use it for an art piece. Once we finish this with two coats of the Sandy Blonde, we are gonna go ahead and use one of the butterfly pieces from transfers. This is from, I think, the Brocant transfer. It's one of the IOD transfers. I wanted this to be more of a neutral color, so I went ahead and used a neutral butterfly, which I think really complemented the whole piece. We're going to go ahead and sand those edges. If you ever paint something and it's just not perfect, you can always sand to blend those two colors of paint in, and that's what I'm going to do here. Plus, give it a little bit of a distressed look along with um, sealing this in again with that polycrylic. Now y'all have to let me know what you think about this one. I love how that polycrylic brought this paint those paint colors to life. Let me know in the comments below so far which one is your favorite. This next piece is just a really easy one. We're going to take some of these uh, postcards that I ordered, I think from Timu. They are like re um, reprints or I don't know. They're from vintage ones, I think. But I'm going to pick up this one with the mushrooms on it. And we're just going to put it in this frame. But the frame size was a little bit larger than the postcard so what I did was got some black paper or I think this is actually cardstock I just, just sort of trimmed around the insert from the back and now I'm just cutting it with my cutter and I'm going to use the postcard on the front of this and I'm going to use my hot glue gun to attach it so it doesn't move when I put it in the frame. So there's a little tip for that. You can use other things. I just happen to have my hot glue gun laying there. You can use double-sided tape, etc. Next piece is a vintage tray, wood tray. Again, this was in rough shape. I went ahead and painted it that folk art black. This has a glass piece in the bottom of it. I took that out and I just put the wood tray part back in the bottom of this. I decided not to use the glass. I was thinking about it, I think, at this time, but then I decided not to use the glass at all. 
What I've decided to do was use a recycled paper on this. So I'm going to go ahead and paint that wood. This, uh, I think it's Cottage White by Folk Art. It's one of their white chalk paints. And once I let that dry, then we're going to put one of Royce's recycled papers on this. This is a caution one. I just love this. I thought it would look super awesome with this black tray. It's a cool industrial type look. So we're just going to go ahead and uh, decoupage that on, on here. To decoupage this, I'm going to be using Paint Couture's Decoupage Medium. This stuff is great. It goes a long way. I've done a lot of projects. You can see this is the same one I've been using, and it has not even gone a quarter of the way down in the, the jar. Now, along with this, I am going to be using my Tim Holtz sprayer and some Saran Wrap. I really think the Saran Wrap does a great job of getting those little, little tiny wrinkles that show up out. I'm not too crazy about the wrinkles. They don't bug me that much. So as long as it's not like a huge wrinkle, I don't mind them. I think it just adds to the kind of look I'm going for. And I'm going to go ahead and finish this decoupage off with adding a coat or two of this on the very top of this paper. While we're letting that part dry, we're going to go ahead and use some sandpaper and a baby wipe and kind of distress the edges of this to give it a little bit more of a distressed look in the process. We're also going to use the polycrylic on this to give it a finished look. I really love how this polycrylic just brings that black color to a beautiful, deep, rich color. Now, don't forget you can see this one and the other projects we've already completed at the end of the video in the photos coming up. We're going to go ahead and get started on another project. I am using a Old Holy Night sign. I'm pretty sure this is a Hobby Lobby special. This was only $2, I think, maybe 3 I like to pick these up because I like to use them to make other things because you just can't go out and buy blanks for this price. So don't forget that when you are thrifting. If you see a shape of something or a quality that you want in a sign but you don't like what's on it, go ahead and pick it up because you can turn it into whatever you want. We're going to use this sign for a base to make a piece of artwork. I ordered some canvas art off of Timu. There are plenty of websites you can order really reasonable artwork off of and upcycle them into something that looks more expensive or that it is more expensive. So this poster that we're going to use is of the different types of owls, but I want to put it on something that's that you can hang on the wall. So I'm using this sign. I'm painting the inside of it. Um, well, it looks like I'm painting all of it. I think this um, black from folk art as my base to go behind my types of owls. Now I'm only painting the outer skirt or edges of it because there's no need to paint underneath. It's going to be covered up. After I painted that black, I went ahead and plant, painted the trim of this with that acorn in the, the Dixie Belle color. And now I'm going to go ahead and take this stays on. I think this is like a dark gray and just go around the edges of this because when I get is get this attached, I don't want it to have white edges, so I'm just going to kind of make them a dark color so they will blend in with the black paint. We are going to be using hot glue to get this uh, attachment started. What I'm going to do is just put a very thin line at the top of this to hold this in place, and then I'm going to use my tight bond quick and, quick and thick to technically decoupage this piece to uh, this frame. Now, I'm not going to do anything once I use the tight bond. I'm just going to attach it that way and uh, kind of hot glue a little bit around the edges just to hold it down. But I'm going to let this dry and I'm not going to use any decoupage medium over the front of this piece because it already has a sheen to it and the glue on the back is going to hold this down perfectly in place so it's not necessary. I did go ahead and polyacrylic around that on that chalk paint, uh, the edge and the black chalk paint of that piece. This next piece is a $2 frame and a less than $2, I think, canvas art scroll piece from Timu. So I'm just going to pop this owl uh, canvas in there and have a beautiful piece of artwork. So let me know in the comments below which one of these projects was your favorite. 
Also, don't forget to go on over to my Facebook page and check out the Cozy Junk Studio. The links for everything will be in the description box below. I so much appreciate all of my subscribers. I so much appreciate for all of the watch hours that you guys have been putting in with my videos. And if you are not a subscriber, go ahead and hit that button. It doesn't cost you anything. It really helps my channel out. I can't wait to share the next video with you all. It's some new products that I think you all are going to love. Hang in there and I will see you in the next video.